Today we are going to develop some complex layers and do a version of negative painting to bring out the focal image. Hi, I'm Creative Katie, Karen Virgil. Welcome to my channel. So I'm working on my 9 by 12 Canson Mixed Media page. I've taken it off the coil so I can work flat and I'm going to break the page by stamping with black acrylic paint. This is a darkroom door stamp called Cogs. And I just, here I am wanting some dark pattern in the background behind the layers of color that I'm going to put. This is left swirl, I believe. There's also right swirl. And both of these stamps can be purchased as well as some of the stencils at ninniesnapkins.com. There is a link in the description box below. Now this page was gessoed before I stamped. And the reason I gessoed it was I typically do that for all the pages, but in order to remove paint through the stencil, that is a requirement. And that's what you just saw me doing with that garden gate stencil. I'm putting a layer of paint on, putting the stencil on top, and then wiping, getting out the paint through the stencil using a baby wipe. This one, this stencil is called Magic Ladder. This technique with stencils gives you, reverses the stencil. So the part that would typically be colored is going to be white. This is the kaleidoscope stencil. My interest here is just to get some pattern on the page. I have the stamp in the black behind with the two stamps. Now I'm using these three stencils. Now I'm rubbing paint through those stencils in a more traditional way of stenciling. I'm using three colors here. I'm using Bright Aqua, which is what I'm using right now, Quinacridone Magenta, which is the pink, and a gray purple. They're all Liquitex Basics brands. You wanna move fairly quickly with this technique because you want to be able to lift the paint. The gesso acts as a resist, which makes it all the more possible. Here I'm just getting some more of that pattern through the stencil. With a brush, I'm not too worried about being very precise. Now I realize I have very straight lines there. I don't really like that. So I wanted to break that up a little bit by doing some stenciling with the Garden Gate stencil. Now I put white gesso through it and then I decided, you know what, I wanna add texture too. So I grabbed my thick gesso. I'll link a couple brands in the description box. And I just want to break up that those straight lines. That's not overly appealing. Now this is going to add texture, it's added that white contrast, and suddenly, <coughs> excuse me, the page looks so much better. But I'm far, far, far from done. I'm coming back in with the same colors and the same stencils, and I'm doing the traditional stenciling. I'm targeting areas that have the quadacridone magenta. I can add, layer up the, either the purple or the bright aqua. I want this pattern, this stenciling, to show up. And I'm even going over top of the white. I am looking to develop a complex, multi-layered background. And at this time, I have absolutely no idea what focal image I'm going to do. I I'm just enjoying the process of creating this background. I'm putting the stencil over top and basically painting some of that texture that we got from the putting the thick gesso through that stencil. When you're building a background, you want color, texture, either visual or physical, and pattern. So I've used three stencils, three colors, with the addition of white as well. 
and the black from the stamping that I did initially, which you can still see through all these layers. Every time you add a layer, you're pushing what's behind it goes back. And somebody had asked recently, how do you know when you're done? When it feels done. When you get it to a point that where you like it. And sometimes that's an easy decision and sometimes it's not. Just going to edge this with a little bit of black here. As I think about what I want to add. And then I decide I want to add some black. I want a little bit more black in there. So I grab this ethereal stencil. This is a six inch one. And I love that little motif. It looks like a little star and it's just the right size. And it really adds a lot of life to this background. I think so anyways. I'll just keep moving the stencil around and applying it. I'm not too worried about making it so perfect. Then I decide I'm going to grab my archival ink and I'm that COGS st stamp from Darkroom Door and I'm going to apply that. I like the scale of the patterning that's on there. And while you can't really make it out that it's COGS, and I'm not being overly precise and getting a full stamp either, it is adding some interesting patterning to this background. So there is the background, and yes, it is very busy. And at this point, I kind of closed it up for the day. I did not know what I wanted to do, so I let it sit overnight. Now on my desk, I have these paint samples. This is from, I believe, Home Depot. And I love the shape of this. And so it's been, I thought I could do something with this. But it's been sitting on my desk for quite a while. I've been grabbing it numerous times, but today is the day I'm going to use it. And I thought, you know, I can make a butterfly with this. And I cut out the center. And then I looked and I found this girl in amongst my stash. I cut off the legs and decided I'm going to use this magazine cut out as the body of the butterfly. Then I went to a, a, a sentiment pack that I'm working on right now, Wings and Things, and I thought, yes, the, set, the sentiment head up, wings out, seems to go well with the butterfly wings and the attitude that this girl seems to have. If you want to check out my sentiment packs, they are all available at ninniesnapkins.com. There is a link in the description box. And hopefully this newest one will make it there before too long. I'm tracing this template from this paint sample, the wings with white charcoal. And I'm liking the color of one of those now so I'm deciding that maybe I'm going to paint it that bright aqua color but I thought you know I'm going to do this I'm going to shade around this to make the butterfly wings stand out because maybe maybe I'm going to like that so before I go and paint it out the aqua color I'm going to do this shading and I'm thinking you know if I like it here I'm going to leave it here and you can see how this really makes it look 3d this is negative painting you're painting out the background to make parts of it stand out and sometimes you can paint the rest of the background all white or you could paint it all pink or purple and then just the butterfly wings would show up but here I'm just shading. I want to keep that background, but differentiate the wings. 
I will put a link in the iCards to the video where I teach the floating acrylic technique. And if you want to learn a shading technique using acrylic paints, that is a great tutorial. There's not enough. I just really didn't like it quite enough. So I am taking the bright aqua and painting out the butterfly wings. Now, when I first put it, I'm watering down the paint a little bit because I'm thinking, okay, I can still probably see some of that patterning coming through. Maybe I'm gonna like that. And I decide that no, I really, there's texture from wherever I put that thick gesso through. And I like how that's coming up but I want to make this fairly opaque. So I'm going to go back after it dries and give it another coat and paint it out. So you're really not seeing any of the pattern in the butterfly wings. And I use an angle brush because I find that works best for cutting in around the bands and getting nice straight edges. It just seems to be easier to manipulate the brush. So if you struggle with that, painting in things, get some angle brushes. So once that's dry, I'm going to shade on the inside. Now before I shaded on the outside, and now I'm shading on the inside. This, if you have any blemishes in your edge, this kind of masks that and hides it, as well as it's really making these butterfly wings stand out all the more. And for all the shading, I am using black. Now from here, you cannot see the texture from the gesso, but that does give it some pattern. Although I, right now I'm thinking, I need a little bit more pattern in the wings. I'm not exactly happy with the wings, but it's gonna take me a bit of time before I figure out what I need to do. I'm edging the page using the floating acrylic technique again. You could edge with charcoal. You could shade around the butterfly wings with charcoal or the Sabilo All Pencil. But those aren't permanent, whereas shading with the acrylic paint is permanent. So you don't have to worry about reactivating it at a later stage. I'm going to use gel medium to glue the girl down and the sentiment down. They're a little thicker and there is a lot of texture on the page from the gesso and all the layers of paint, so I want to do. Now, if you can't find a girl, you can substitute a Jubilee Nutting doll, you can substitute in a magazine clip, or you can just cut a butterfly body, just like I did initially. I chose a font that was fairly bold to go with the black. Now here's where I'm adding some pattern to those wings. I'm lining it up with the texture from the gesso and I'm going in with white acrylic paint to add some pattern to those wings. They just look too plain to me. They were just too matte, too plain. Now, of course, this would have been way easier to do before I glued the girl down. So if you're trying to follow along, definitely stencil in on the wings before you glue the girl down. Don't make it harder on yourself, but there's always a way. And here where I've gotten a little bit on the uh, gloves of her or on the body of her dress, I can just take a baby wipe and wipe it off or paint it black. No problem. So this makes me really happy. And I chose that Garden Gate stencil because one, I absolutely love it. Two, it's the right scale. And it's also a stencil that I have in the background. I don't want to introduce something else. This is a very busy, busy page. And introducing yet one more pattern would make it even more so. 
shading around the sentiment. And just adding more shading on the wings just to make it till I really, really like it. I do shade around the girl as well. I'm not sure if that was on the camera, but I do want to let you know that I did shade her body, her head, the dress. Now I just want to introduce a little bit of black to those wings and I'm splattering with black. And I believe I splatter with silver as well. Just got to add some bling and some purple. There was some purple left on my craft mat and so I just sprayed some water on it thinned it out and I come back in and I splatter with that here's the silver I did take a baby wipe and wipe off the face and that works because it's coated with matte medium because remember when I glued it down I used matte medium that makes it a non-porous surface and it makes it easy to clean up now I thought I was done there. In fact, I had loaded up the video and started editing it. And then I decided, nope, I need to outline the wings. So I grabbed my fine line applicator bottle with white paint in it. This is just thinned white paint, Liquitech Basic Basics paint, paint. And I'm just outlining it in white. And I'm finding that just makes such a difference. It just defines the wings gives it some more weight to the whole focal image. And then I'm going around the body as well. And I, this is at the point where, the, yes, I finally, I am happy with this, I'm loving this. Now, you don't have a fine line applicator bottle. I suggest you get one because I absolutely love them and have used them so, so, so much. But you can use a, a micron pan. You can use a white gel pen. Going around the edge, making a squiggly line. And then I decide I'm not done. I decide, you know, to go along with the attitude, I'm going to put some words on her wings. <clears throat> so I've stamped out with my wooden blocks letters, and I've got letters in various sizes, and I love, love, love using them. I stamp them out on paper first, just to get the sizing for the placement on my composition. And then I dip them into black acrylic paint that's what's on the palette and I stamp in you need to have a baby wipe at hand to wipe off the excess paint or to wipe off if you make a mistake and I just love how this looks so I'm type printing in the words love joy faith and hope Instead of the words, you could have taken a black gel pen and outlined the garden gate stencil on the wings, and that would make it very much more wing-like. So with every page, there's lots of possibilities. There is no wrong way, and there you saw me erasing, wiping it off, cleaning it up when if a mess happens. And I can do that because everything underneath is acrylic paint and is permanent. So we're coming to an end. There are some close ups of this coming up. Leave me a comment. If you really would like me to work faster on the Wings and Things sentiment pack, let me know. I hope you love the page. Until next time, go get creative.